All right, everybody, today we're going to be using electrolysis to remove rust from steel and iron. So let's get to it. All right, now, so here's all the things that we're going to need to uh, set up this electrolysis tank. We've got a, a uh, old style battery charger. You don't want to use a smart charger, and I can't recall the reason exactly why, but uh, there must be some issue with that. Probably it, it won't like the sort of shorting kind of situation that we're going to have going here. Uh, I've got some rebar, some iron or steel tying wire, no copper, no stainless steel. And I'll, I'll explain that probably in another video. Anyway, we've got some clamps, uh, arm and hammer, uh, you know, it's called the washing soda. And I believe this is uh, potassium carbonate, or uh, excuse me, sodium carbonate. You'll have to forgive me if I'm incorrect. But uh, you don't want to use baking soda because uh, it has uh, chlorine and can produce, I guess, chlorine gas. So don't use baking soda. You get this stuff. It ain't expensive. I bought it at Walmart. Uh, I know you can get it on Amazon. I will definitely put a link to that and uh, any of these other things that I think you might need. Anyway, other than that, you're going to need some water. Uh, it's probably better to use distilled water, but I don't think that's going to matter very much. I'm going to have a small plastic tub, and we're going we're gonna to fill that up. And uh, this is a half a gallon here, so... We'll put in a gallon, then we'll start putting some marks here with the pen so we can... Next time I use the tank, I'll be able to just put however many gallons in there. Uh, anyway, yeah, plastic tub. We've got a couple of rusty things here. This is a C-clamp, which would be a pretty nice C-clamp if it wasn't rusted solid. I think that's a pony. There's nothing, you know, of great historical consequences there. Uh, this is kind of a nice old... Uh, uh, Monkey wrench, not a monkey wrench, made by a guy named Monkey who uh, designed this. Uh, but it's it's rusted solid here inside of this, and it's not in super bad condition. There is kind of a lot of rust on the surface though, so we'll put that in there. Maybe we can clean that up too. All right, let's uh, we'll start filling up our tank here with water. All right, that's one gallon right there. All right, well, that's handy to know. Right there on that mark, that's two gallons. so good. All right, three gallons looks like a pretty good quantity. So we'll mark the tub. So I kind of had some roundabout instructions on how much of this uh, washing soda you're supposed to add to the water. And I guess it's supposed to be anywhere between one to two teaspoons per five cups of water. Well, we're measuring in gallons and that doesn't work out very close. Although uh, this is three gallons and that's 48 cups. So about 10 teaspoons. And just in case you guys didn't know, uh, Three teaspoons makes a tablespoon, so that means probably we'll be all right here with uh, three heaping tablespoons, I think, should do. All right, so let's open up this box here. All right. Try 
enough to destroy my box here. Too bad. I would like to get in here and... Well, so much for that. Alright, so here's a tablespoon measure. There's one. And you could go... In this volume, I suppose we could go up to six. And we'll start with the minimum and see what happens. Now, the reason you're putting this in here anyway is... Uh, People don't really realize this, but pure water is actually not the best conductor. And we're putting this in here to uh, improve its conductivity. So uh, the term for this, this liquid is going to be uh, an electrolyte. So I'm sure you've heard of things like incapacitors and stuff. There's electrolytes and whatever, Gatorade, right? <laughs> uh, things like that. But elect electrolytes... Uh, improve the conductivity of water. So that's what we're trying to do. We're a little lumpy here too, aren't we? This would probably be a good idea to mix this up in some warm water, but I just filled it up with the garden hose. So I'll spare you watching this and I'll get it all mixed up and then we'll get to the next part. All right, so we got that all mixed up now. That took, uh, I don't know, two or three minutes. Nothing, nothing super special. I just use my piece of rebar here. These things are cheap, dollar a piece. They don't have to be this. Just anything made out of steel is fine. That you don't mind getting eroded away. And uh, I don't know. We'll try just sticking one of these in each corner. And that's why I've got these clamps. Clamp that on there. Got my, got my finger in there. My daughter. <laughs> and my daughter put a sticker on my hand so you, if anybody's wondering why I've got Daisy Duck on my hand that that's why anyway that this water is generally speaking this this is pretty safe stuff it is a little bit on the basic side of the scale though so uh, don't go sticking your hands in it too much uh, I've got some nitro gloves over there that I'll put on in a minute when I go to start reaching around in there uh, but I think it would just be a, an irritant. It's not, you know, toxic or anything crazy. If it was, probably I wouldn't be doing this. All right. Okay, so we got that. And uh, what we're going to need to do we're going to need to connect these things all together. So that's what we got the wire for. Uh, you know, and a, a good tip, my grandfather uh, worked in the Iron Workers Union and he started out tying rebar and he said, always put, you know, a little curl on the end of it in case this thing snaps and hits you in the eye. Well, it won't stab your eye and blind you. So keep that in mind. That's a good tip for you guys. So anyway, Unroll out a little piece of wire and we'll tie these all together. Is that going to be enough? Not quite. Wire is squirrely stuff. All right. Well, I suppose we can just wrap it around it. Pretty good. That should work. And you could use more or less anodes or a, oh, I can't remember if this is the anode or the cathode now, but, but you could always use more or less and they could be moved to different points. And when you hook up the charger, you don't want to be drawing super high amounts of amperage, you know, uh, two or three amps is probably about all you really want. Uh, some people will tr crank it way up and I I don't know I've, I've heard I don't know take it for what it's worth but I've heard that 
could be bad. Maybe it isn't, but you know, slow is usually better on these kind of things. All right, so uh, probably it would have been smarter to have another piece of uh, steel that would would run across the length of this, but uh, you know, I just tied some wire to this piece of piece of wood. So I kind of wired onto my C clamp here. I think we're going to hold off on this on this wrench for a little bit. Uh, it doesn't fit in this box super good, and I would have to set up the anodes a little bit different, but this will work good for this. So I just put some wire onto that, and it's touching this here, so it should have good electrical uh, you know, contact, and then I can clamp on to, with uh, the negative side of the charger over here. So you want to make sure to remember that your part needs to be connected to the negative, because the positive is going to be deteriorating whatever material it's attached to. So you hook it up backwards, you're going to lose your part. You're going to be dissolving your part slowly. So that's a bad idea. All right, everybody, we're coming up to the moment of truth here. So I've got my negative that goes onto our part. And then I've got the positive here. Clip that onto there. So the power is off and you don't want to connect or disconnect this stuff with the power being on, okay? Uh, when this is in process here, it's generating pure hydrogen and pure oxygen, and you don't want any sparks. It's very remote. I've never heard of anybody ever blowing up anything, but, uh, you know, it's better to be cautious than sorry. So just make sure to unplug the charger before you where you start disconnecting things or you know doing stuff that might make sparks over here all right let's turn this on and see if we don't get any action i'm going to check the amperage draw that's on the uh, meter of the charger does not look like we're we probably have bad connection i guess all right let's turn it off see if we can get a little bit better connection put it on the 12 volt setting we're not drawing any amperage here at all hardly but it is definitely doing something if we oh yeah okay we're getting contact I can see bubbles coming off of the part so we're doing good we're not drawing hardly any amperage at all which like I said I believe is uh, supposed to be a good thing and we'll let this thing here go for a few hours and we'll come back and take a look at it again see just how long this whole process takes I'm supposed to be able to get some pretty good results in a short amount of time all right so it's been about 24 hours and you can see uh, the water is getting kind of a rusty color and uh, on my rebar over here you can see it's a little bit of foamy it's kind of some it's pretty gross actually but at any rate you know it's it's doing its thing it does not seem like we're getting action all the way across the whole part it mostly looks like it's coming from the wire so I hope we're not just cleaning this wire really good so uh, let's let's shut off the uh, power here we'll pull this thing out and have a look and see what it looks like and then we'll clean up the uh, you know our our anodes and we'll go brush the part clean uh, clean it up a little bit and this will probably go back in again we'll have a look and see how it's going all right so power's off so let's take a look at this thing it does seem like it looks cleaner let me turn the screw yet <clears throat> well not yet and I don't know if we'll be able to clean it. This thing, this system kind of works on the line of sight. So of course we can't see inside of where that thing's all rusted together. But if we can get this screw cleaned up really good, maybe we can get some penetrating oil to get in there. Maybe we can salvage it yet. Yeah, the pin is still frozen in there. So, all right, let's uh, set this aside for a second. And then let's take a look at our anodes and see what, uh, what's going on with them. 
All right, so this has got all kinds of nice, crusty, disgustingness on it, right? Uh, but this is part of the process, right? So clean that off. We'll take these things out and we'll go brush them up, clean them up. And we'll put them back in there and use them some more. All right, well, here's some of that, give you a little bit better view of the that rust kind of junk that builds up on these uh, cathodes here. So just a little bit of water, just a regular old steel brush, nothing fancy here. And you can see what it does in the sink there. It's a lot of iron in that material. And those guys are up. All right. And the part we really care about, let's see what this looks like. still see there's quite a bit of rust on this so I'm not sure if I've been getting good contact or not I think I might touch this with a, a file maybe or something just so I know I've got good you know steel contact with my wire it didn't it's supposed to uh, bubble pretty much across this whole part and it really was it was only bubbling on the wire so I think we may have not done a lot although I can see it's there's some spots here where it's it's looking pretty clean, but this part is still really rusty. So, all right, we're gonna go set it back up in the tank and turn it on again. All right, I think I'm gonna try something a little bit different this time. So I did, I kind of polished this up with my file just a little bit. So we'll hang this back on there. So it's submerged in the water. That looks good. And instead of uh, you know wrapping the wires around everything I think I'm gonna just stick this in here and I'm gonna kind of just clamp the wire maybe with the clamp you know clamp it to the uh, come on to the bar because it was very difficult to get that off of there All right, there's one I think it might be a uh, be a good idea to maybe invest in more of these big alligator clamps and then I can just have wires that run between them. And and really this could be this could be copper wire up here. You remember though, you don't want it into the bee. Be down there in that electrolyte. That's bad. It'd be stripping copper into your water supply. And I believe that's you know a toxic solution that you're not supposed to be pouring on the ground also. It's a lot easier just to work with sort of known clean processes. All right, let's turn the power on, see what happens. Okay. I think I'm starting to see a little bit of bubbles coming off and it looks like, yeah, here it goes. And it is coming off of the whole part. So I think probably I just didn't have a good enough uh, electrical connection to the part. So we were just making sure that wire is really, really clean. All right, we're gonna let this go for a while more and see how it works out. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I'm still trying to get myself up to a thousand subscribers. I am really, really close. There's been a lot of people who've helped me out. So uh, again, I just wanna say thanks to everybody on that. Uh, anyway, if you enjoyed this kind of content, uh, please uh, subscribe over here by clicking on the old horizontal mill icon. And uh, please consider, you know, joining my Patreon page.